You can use Excel to do functions with dates, such as calculate the days between dates and calculate a maturity date. So let's say in our first example, you wanted to calculate how many days you're alive, and yes, I'm old. So I put in today's date, I put in my birth date. So to calculate my age and days, all I have to do in cell C4 is type in equal sign and tell Excel to take today and subtract my birth date. And that's because Excel remembers dates as a serial number, the number of days since January 1st, 1900. So you can actually do mathematical calculations with dates. And I have been alive 23,085 days. In a similar situation, if you want to know how long it is to graduate, put in today's date, put in your graduation date, and just take the difference between the two. So I'm going to take my graduation date, B7, and subtract my date today, A7, hit enter, and it is 362 days until I graduate. You could also use Excel to calculate maturity dates. So if your friend today borrows some money from you for 90 days, you could use Excel to calculate when that money is due. So in cell C10, I'm going to type an equal sign, and I'm going to tell Excel to take A10, the loan date, and add 90 days to the loan date. And then when I hit Enter, you'll find that the maturity date is 8-17-2023. There are also many functions in Excel that help you to calculate the number of days between dates and other functions involving dates. We're only going to go over a couple of them in this video. So first, in our third example, let's say you wanted to calculate the number of days between dates. To calculate the number of days between dates, as I showed you before, I'll click in cell C13 and just take my maturity date and subtract my loan date. And you can see that there are 104 days in that loan. Now I could do the same thing with the days function. So in the days function, I'm going to click on formulas, then the date and time, and then days. So it's just going to ask for first the end date. So for the end date, I'm going to click on the maturity date. Then I'm going to click in the start date. That is going to be the loan date. And notice I'm going to get exactly the same answer, 104 days. Now, if you've ever counted days using a 360-day uh, year, you're going to know that it counts a little bit differently. And you can actually do that using the days 360 function. So now I'm going to click on cell C15, date and time, days 360. This one asks first for the start date. So the start date is going to be the loan date. The end date is going to be the maturity date. So notice I get 102 days, and there are different methods that we can use. False or omitted is going to be the U.S. method. If you type in true, you'll get the European method, and we get 102 days. Now, one final warning about using dates in Excel. You cannot use a date in a formula. So I cannot type equals 5, 19, 20, 23 plus 90. That will not work. Excel will count that as a division, not as a date. So there are two ways that I can use dates in formulas. The first thing that you can do is what I showed you before. First, put in the date, and then put in the formula using a reference to the cell that holds the date. So I'll take A17 plus 90 days. Another way that you can use it is to use the date function in Excel. That's the only way that you can embed a date within a formula. So if I type equals date and open the parentheses, 2023 for the year, type a comma, 5 for the month, 19 for the day, close that up. Now I can use that in a formula and add 90 days, and notice I'll get the same answer, 
8, 17, 2023.